Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to view Werewolf by Night. So, this is obviously just a showcasing of this character. At some point, we might get this uh, character fully incorporated into something later. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe like a Moon Knight tie-in, because uh, I wanted that since the first season, and I was like, okay, like, maybe with how people are pouring out and saying, we thought this thing was great that like we can turn around and just have this uh character being used somewhere down the road somewhere uh in other versions uh and i also like the fact that this movie is telling us yeah we're gonna start off the uh the horror mcu with werewolf by night because of course you already have stuff like morbius or you've had like blade a number of years ago but uh, like Werewolf by Night via the MCU is to be the one thing that is to like really kick this off. Uh, oh, we also had stuff like Ghost Rider, and uh, I'm sure there's somewhere that I'm missing any number of things. But anyways, this movie was a showcasing. Like DC did some showcase stuff with their animated films. They did like animated shorts where. Uh, they would have, like, Superman versus Shazam, and, like, they would have some showcasings. Uh, like, the Spectre, I think, was, like, the best DC showcasing, but they went on and also did, like, Jonah Hex and, like, a number of other shorts that were, like, way better than a lot of their, like, full-length movies. And I was like, man, why couldn't we have gone on and had a full-length movie of this character, that character that, of course, had, uh been within these DC showcases because I think they would have turned out to be something great. Like, I think Green Arrow was also another showcase. But so, uh, because, like, Arrow was a thing around the same time, so it's like, oh, yeah, we're definitely going to go on and do a Green Arrow showcase. But anyways, so, we're off by night. We have so much about this film be a throwback. We have throwback ideas, we have just a throwback look, and I love the fact that in the beginning of, like, the Marvel intro, we have, like, the claws, like, like, just trying to make its way through, and I thought that that was so cool of a simple, it was a simple intro, this is a simple movie, but I had fun while watching it. Uh, I like werewolf movies anyways, as you can obviously see when I am to go on and watch any werewolf movie, I will go on and probably tell you that. For the most point, I think there's some of them where I forget about that. But I love werewolf movies. I just do. So, Werewolf by Night has a throwback story where we come into finding a man named Ulysses Bloodstone who had gotten his name from the bloodstone of which that he is to wear upon his chest, we have Ulysses that goes on to die in the early part of this film, which then leads the uh, next person, which may not be his like heir to his throne, technically. We have it up to all comers who are to go on into this hunt to be whoever is to kill this monster and take this uh, this bloodstone. They are to go on and become uh, the person who wields this, and it seems that there is an, a plethora of different abilities that this bloodstone possesses and powers and so on and so forth. I'm not going to rattle off all of them. I'm just going to say that this is to, of course, have a number of things. Uh, you can also go on, and I'm sure Comic Explained uh, has a is going to probably have a number of tie-ins and, and telling of the Werewolf by Night. Uh, we also do have certain uh, videos that are to also give you the history or the origin of Jack's character, where, of course, he is to inherit the Werewolf gene by him going on and to just become 18 and he starts becoming a werewolf and so we don't like showcase that in this movie we just don't have the time we just roll in jack into 
uh, into this hunt. So we have a number of characters and a number of monsters uh, that, of course, are to be uh, showcased throughout here that are honestly just invented for this film. I, of course, was to scour the internet and try to find a number of sources that could give me anything of history of any of these characters, and it seems that this thing is just to be rolled in, uh, like, to be its own thing. So it's kind of like She-Hulk in a lot of ways, where She-Hulk would just invent a lot of characters uh, to be in their show. For this movie, we kind of invent a lot of things with the exclusion of Ulysses Bloodstone as an actual person. Uh, Elsa Bloodstone is to have her own book right now so you can check that out uh, especially if you already liked this character and werewolf by night has had a huge uh history in marvel comic book comic books also with having him be uh tied into moon knight uh which is to supposedly be the first time we really see um werewolf by night being used so with that said uh Really, also, we end up getting a fun character in this movie who is to be called Ted, who has his own comic book and origin and so on and so forth. And, uh, of course, there's a whole review that I have already gone on and done about this character through another film. And that explains his whole origin and everything like that. Because, of course, uh, this character will be some kind of man thing. And so with that said, there's a whole movie that covers a man thing review that is also to be on my channel so you can check out that uh through possibly the marvel reviews or more than likely i might go on and just do a whole like horror uh mcu movie uh, kind of thing uh especially when uh these movies don't have sequels or, or whichever anyways uh but yeah so going into this film this movie was great. It was simple. I'll, I'll admit that, but it was great. And plus also it gives us a kind of Wizard of Oz thing by the end of this film, um, which is to tell us that not every single one of these kinds of things will always be in black and white. Uh, but I thought it was, I thought this movie was such uh, simplicity as, it, as at its best. We can go on and have a whole entire She-Hulk or Miss Marvel show that gives us nothing, but we can have a 55-minute movie that it's like, man, this was everything, even though it didn't give us a clear origin of the werewolf character, or it didn't go on and, and like spell everything out to us, because I feel like we're going to go on and do that somewhere else, somewhere down the road. We're going to have fun with this character a lot more, uh, because I think hands down everybody used to go on and say that like yeah like we all like resoundingly like this movie there's probably going to be someone that honestly goes in here and doesn't like werewolf by night uh but that's fine because for me also i liked movies like the deadliest game like the hemsworth movie uh because it went on qb or, or quibi and then uh, Quibi ended up kind of just uh, falling apart like it did. And then they just re-put it out as a film. Uh, we also had like the John Leguizamo movie called The Pest that feels a lot like The Deadliest Game in a lot of ways. Uh, but that's done in a very comedic-like way. And so like really you can, you can see like certain kind of variations or modern versions of like a Deadliest Game or Hunt-like film. But so anyways, uh, other than that, uh, I think it's about that time to just go into spoilers. Uh, there's not much for me to go on and, and really try to break down besides what I already did. Um, so with that said, I'm just going to go into spoilers. It's only a 55 minute movie. I'm going to try to make this review as quickly as possible. So let's just get into spoilers and let's break all this down. This movie isn't, like, filled to the brim with Easter eggs. It's not like you're going to go on and find every single one of these characters through a comic book variation wherever, somewhere. Uh, and so, with that said, I applauded that movie for just trying to go on and do something drastically original or different or whatever. So, with that said, let's go on and just double five this bad boy up. Let's just get into spoils about this one because it's about that time yet again. To go into spoil time, spoil time, it's about the time you spoil this movie. So, 
we go on and have Jack, uh, who is to make his way into this lavish, uh, uh, kind of compound. So Jack goes on and is to circle around to look at all the headstones of all these uh, different kind of monsters that had been killed off, I guess, through a number of these different kind of hunts over the years. So we have Jack uh, bumping into a guy immediately named uh, Joven. I'm not quite sure if I'm even pronouncing that right, but uh, for the lack of better word of all of these names at some point getting not pronounced in this film, I'm just going to go with Joven, even though it might be pronounced differently, because whatever. So, uh, we have Jock, we have Jock, we have Jock, Jack, we have Jack going on and talking with Joven, and so Joven is stating how, like, uh, being these killers or these death dealers could be a very lonely profession because, of course, after you go on and kill whoever you're going after, uh, yeah, like you're by yourself again. So, Joe is to mention that he is to have 57 confirmed kills, and Jack is like, wow, like that, that seems like a lot, so on and so forth. And so, uh, Joven is going on and uh, praising jack for having the makeup of which that we see uh him wearing and joven is to state it's like well like i know a lot of people would uh try to garner their anonymity and so on and so forth but like what you're uh trying to pull off there looks looks really great and jack mentions that of course it's an homage to its to his ancestors and hence why it's the reason why he is to have gone on and, and worn this kind of makeup which i thought uh looked like it was it was again another simple thing but it was great so like a lot of people can go on and cosplay this character and i think that's the one reason why they did something like that so it gives people all the reason in the world to cosplay uh as either the werewolf or as either jack uh when a lot of people are to immediately uh overwhelmingly like this movie for whatever reason so uh, so Jack and uh, Joven are talking about a U Ulysses and how he's dead. And really Jack was so like uh, mesmerized by the room that he didn't even realize that there was a coffin in the middle of the room also. And he was like, oh yeah, like Ulysses. They're like, oh, it's, it's such a horrible thing that he's dead now. And so we go on to have uh one of the assistants of uh verusa verusa go on and state that elsa has come so uh verusa is to make her way to meet up with elsa bloodstone and so we have verusa who is talking to elsa about uh, the backstory of this character, letting us know that Elsa was to have not go on and to train under her father, but Elsa was to go and get uh, training elsewhere. And so Verasa was to state that Elsa leaving was like the the biggest disappointment or the biggest uh, like painful moment where it's like obviously Elsa should have taken on this bloodstone and they wouldn't have needed this hunt whatsoever. So Barasa and Elsa like are uh, are going on and. Uh, bickering back and forth but also giving Elsa her backstory so Verasa then continues to go on and talk with all the people who have finally made it into this hunt we have uh Azriel we have uh Lioran uh or Lyran we have Barasso and so on and so forth 
as far as the the hunters who have already explained already jack and joven and elsa so Barasa is to get this thing going, and so she is to start to state a number of people who have all started to kill people and started to talk about the numbers of which that they have gone on and done. Like, uh, Verasso ends up killing, like, 27 people. Uh, and we, of course, have Joven, who is to be 57. But then we also turn to Jack and state that he has killed over 100 people, give or take. And we have Lyron, or Lyoran, who is looking at Jack. It's like, you've killed a hundred? And Jack's like, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, like, Jack, I guess, is to really be the expert out of all these people. And come to find out, this guy really does not want to go on and get his hands dirty, and we'll figure out why. So... Barasa is to mention that it seems that Ulysses wanted to go on and have himself personally give these uh, give these hunters a speech before they go off. And so come to find out for the time period, the only thing that they can go on and do is have this coffin open up and Ulysses is to seemingly perform like uh if any of you were to have gone on and seen those like animatronics from like Chuck E. Cheese or like of course if you've ever like played the game of Friday Night Five Nights of Freddy like we have Ulysses that's kind of moving around like that he's like I'll be rafting for you ha 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 graveyard humor ha 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 so we have Ulysses going on and explaining the game and so on and so forth and so after they go on and close his coffin up we have uh, Leoran, who is now complaining that Elsa, look, well, hey, like, where is her medallion? Why is she even here? And, like, for us is to say, it's like, well, like, because Elsa is welcome here. Like, I would have, if I were Elsa, I would have shut this guy up by saying, like, my birthright gives me all the reason for me to be here along with you people. Like, for me to go on and share the same blood as this man, who is to be my father, like, gives me all the reasoning. Like, I don't have to go on and give some medallion or some amulet or whatever to, like, state that I deserve to be here. So, we then go on, and so... We have a bizarre flaming tuba that appears in some part of this this movie, oddly. Because I was like, because I was going through IMDb and I saw like the the flaming tuba character was in IMDb for whatever goofy reason. So I had to look it up. I'm like, when was there a flaming tuba? Because that freaking looked, that would have been cool if I would have noticed that. But I, I didn't, I didn't really glare at it because I didn't really care. But I saw a picture of it and I was like, oh, okay. All right. So... Barasa is to give everyone outside, and they are to give uh, certain people a chance to go on and pick who goes in there first. Goes into this, like, huge elaborate maze slash city. So, we also are to state that everyone is to go on and be fair game. What that means is, is we could have one hunter kill off or death deal every single one of the other death dealers... And they could face the monster alone and then collect this bloodstone and win this hunt and go on to uh, wheel the bloodstone. Like, Elsa is up for grabs as well as everybody. So if they, if they have some kind of uh, agenda against Elsa, here's the time to go on and pick this girl off. And I honestly think there should have been somebody like who have got gotten paid to possibly kill off Elsa through this whole thing because that would have made the whole that would have like made sense for this story would have had a Verasa who is to have hated Elsa to the point of paying a uh, a guy of sorts to kill her off but it seems that we don't go in that direction here's a goofy thing though Verusa or Verasa mentions that all the weapons that anyone is going to go on and need 
is going to be inside this uh this maze and it seems that people are to have gone on and not done that and brought their own weaponry hence why you have uh leorn who goes on and has his own crossbow that elsa takes as well as this kind of uh rope this like kind of grappling thing that elsa ends up taking also after elsa goes on and takes this guy's life after she kills him she snaps his neck anyways so jack goes in to this maze for first and so because we have joven who notices that jack ends up getting uh the lucky pick and joven's like oh you lucky uh so Jack goes in there first and they're going on and like having all this like chanting going on as he's going in there. So Jack makes it in there and is starting to just uh, make his way around. So Jack ends up bumping back into Elsa Bloodstone. And so Jack tells Elsa, it's like, well, hey, how about we just like go our separate ways? And Elsa's like, what? And Jack's like, yeah, how about we just kind of just like we'll go our separate ways. All of a sudden, Joven comes flying in to attack both Jack and Elsa. And so we have Jack and Elsa getting away from Joven. But Joven is to claim that it's like, hey, you're going to uh, you're going to get yours, Lassie. So Jack and Elsa separate. And so come to find out jack has his own agenda as jack is making his way through this maze and he ends up getting grabbed by of course this man called ted who is actually man thing there's a whole entire movie uh that i've gone on reviewed about man thing there is a man thing movie uh drastically the man thing that you see in the man thing movie does not look like this this man thing is to actually look a lot more comic book accurate. And that's the one thing that I'm like, yeah. Like, when I was to see, like, this quick glimpse of man thing in the trailer, I was like, oh, my God. Like, an actually comic book accurate version of a character. Isn't that great? So, when Jack meets up with man thing, we have a history between these two characters. I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. So... Jack is the state that he has gone on and saved Man-Thing a number of times. And, like, this character should try to figure out a way to get, uh, should figure out a way to, to keep himself out of trouble. But so, we have the Man-Thing's back that has the bloodstone upon it. And Verasa is to mention that this creature will get weakened because of this bloodstone um but it will also make it angry so jack is to ask uh ted it's like well hey like how are you feeling like oh you're feeling weak yeah like they said that that would happen to you so jack is to tell ted about these bombs that they were given and he's like yeah i'm gonna go on and just kind of blow our way out of here because i want us both to just escape uh, like, I don't care who gets the bloodstone, like, I just want you to be safe, and I want to just get out of here before I get killed by somebody. So, Jack is talking to the man thing, and so, we go on to have Elsa, that is to fight Lyran, and we all know how his fate ends, because I just stated it. So, that he ends up, he ends up getting killed, and so... Elsa, it seems, after killing this guy, she is to realize that someone else is coming, which, of course, was Jovan. And so Elsa just hides underneath Lyran's body, and so Jovan sees this weapon and just collects it and then walks off. So we have Jack, who is going on to... Uh, make his way to try to figure out a spot where he can hide out for a little bit. And so what ends up happening is 
Jack ends up closing these doors. Elsa is trying to tell him, no, don't close the door, and closes it too late. So Elsa is to tell Jack that, like, this uh, kind of tombed-like place or this kind of um, mortuary of sorts where Elsa is to have all of her ancestors, uh, it seems... Uh, there's no way out of this once they kind of lock this door. But then Elsa starts talking about this Aunt Frances, who her father was to claim at one point that if this woman was to ever die, she would come back to life to come after people. And so Elsa realizes that this girl would come with a plan to have this key. So they figure out how to go on and unlock this whole thing. So Elsa and Jack are realizing, hey, let's team up together. So Jack convinces Elsa for them to kind of work together to help out this monster. And Elsa's like, huh? Like, what, what are you talking about? Because Jack wants to save this monster from its fate. So... Because come to find out Jack is a monster himself. So Jack goes on to try to uh, get him and Elsa out of this place. They go after, uh, of course, uh, or they go on to re-meet re up with Man-Thing as Elsa is to need to say... Uh, the man thing's real name, which is actually Ted, because Jack goes on and tells Elsa, it's like, hey, treat him like an old friend. Like, just call him by his name. And Elsa's like, well, what is his name? And Jack is like, his name is Ted. So Elsa goes on and is to seemingly meet up with Jovan and want them to battle yet again. But then the man thing goes on and... Uh, electrifies uh, Jovan because he has that ability to, like, he kind of uh, electrifies people. And that's, they don't do that in the Man Thing movie, but they do it here, oddly. So, again, more comic book accurate. So, the Man Thing goes on and grabs Jovan, kills him. And so, Elsa, after stating that this guy's name is Ted, and he's like, ah, oh, like, you must be, like, a friend of Jack's. So, Elsa is a state that Ted has a beautiful name. And, like, Man-Thing also doesn't talk throughout this whole entire film because he's one of those kind of characters. So, Jack meets up with Man-Thing and Elsa. And so, Jack is like, okay, like, I'm going to go on and, and toss this bomb. How do you figure it out? Jack is to arm the bomb by accident. So, Jack is now running off to toss this bomb against this wall, but the wall, like, will not let this bomb attach to it. So Jack keeps tossing it up there. And so the wall finally explodes with this bomb. And so Man-Thing and Jack are trying to get out of there. Like, hey, Man-Thing, come on. Like, come on, Ted. So Ted tries to escape. And Elsa's like, well, wait a minute. Like, we still have to get the Bloodstone. So... Elsa uses her, like, grappling device and tosses it so that way she can go on and take the bloodstone from the man-thing so that way she can claim it. So, Jack goes on and sees the bloodstone and he's like, well, okay, I'll just hand this over to her. Like, I don't care to have it. So, Jack goes on and tries to grab this bloodstone and he gets rocked back from it. And so we finally have all the hunters that have gathered back into the location where Elsa and Jack are uh, now that the man thing has kind of all like but left. So Verusa is to now notice that if Jack was to go on and touch this bloodstone and he ended up getting... Uh, like, drop back from it, that that means that Jack is to be a monster himself. So, they turn around and they take uh, Jack and Elsa here, and 
put him in a cage. And so we now, of course, are to realize that Jack is a werewolf because he kind of scratches his neck like a normal dog would. So we have Jack talking to Elsa and stating like, well, hey, like all we need is like five days to figure out how to get out of this cage. Like everything will be fine. And Elsa tells Jack, it's like, well, like, Whoever is to wield the bloodstone can instantly transform you into this werewolf. Like, thanks for making it quick in advance. Because she knows she's going to get killed by this werewolf because she has no weapon to fight against him. So, Jack goes on to consistently try to smell Elsa in a way of hoping that he can remember her. And... We have Elsa that is to say, it's like, well, like, has that ever worked? And Jack has mentioned, like, well, one time before. So is there going to be a prequel to this movie? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Because we've had Jack, who is a state in this film, that he was to go on and fight uh, this monster who is to go on and obviously look like uh, a possible Dracula-like character or, Norse for or Nosferatu kind of character. And, like, I guess he was to not have gone on and killed the character just then. But uh, the character has, has gone on and never looked so alive. So, as he's kind of held on this, on this headstone. So, uh, so there might be a prequel... That we could do with this film and wouldn't that be fun um like give us another throwback uh kind of episode or just kind of do like a whole like a whole thing in some other show that'd be great uh because i'm hoping at some point they go on and do like a like a horror team of some sort like a midnight suns or something along those lines somewhere down the road or uh we can go on and have like a like a like a living mummy and all those kind of goofy horror characters from the Marvel Universe kind of just smash into one film and, and, go, and go and have fun with it. So, and I know that would be a stupid idea, but it, it is what it is. So, uh, we have Jack that is to, of course, have Varasa turn him into the werewolf. And we still see his makeup upon his face, but then everything else is to go on and be either hairy or bare pants and so on and so forth. So the werewolf is to go on and break through the cage. And then we start seeing both Elsa and both the werewolf going on and killing off any number of people, these guards and so on and so forth. So, we, of course, have uh, the werewolf who is trying to claw its way to try to get out there. And we have Arasa who tries to go on and use the bloodstone to try and kill this werewolf. As Elsa has gone on and dispatched the rest of uh, uh, Barasso and Azrael by kind of putting, like, swords through their heads and so on and so forth so we have arasa that's using this bloodstone and so we of course go on to have uh via elsa or no 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 uh no 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 um what ends up happening is is that Verusa ends up getting killed by the man thing as Verusa does not go on and notice that the man thing is behind her. So he grabs her and takes her and then burns her and electrifies her and kills her off and then chucks her. So we had of course uh the werewolf that was to run off and so after both the werewolf and elsa were to have this moment together where it kind of looked very much like uh the wolf man from 2010 
where Elsa was laying on the ground and the werewolf was trying to uh, like look at Elsa and was to be on top of her. And Elsa is to try to remember or remind the werewolf that she's Elsa Bloodstone and so on and so forth. So, and then the werewolf does not go on and attack her. But it, like so much about that felt like the end of like the werewolf from 2010. Where uh, the the one girl ends up shooting the werewolf and killing him off at by the end of that film. Spoilers for anybody that hasn't gone and seen The Wolfman 2010. So, of course, that's just the way the movie ends. So, we go on and have the werewolf who runs off after Verossa, of course, is to get killed by Man-Thing. So now... Elsa is to see the man thing is like, ah, like, and so we have Elsa that states where the werewolf had gone on to and man things like, oh, okay. So we then have Elsa who takes on the bloodstone from Verus's dead body. And so we have uh, the assistant that is to go on and state. It's like, oh, okay. Like, uh, like since, like Elsa is to be the last member of the Bloodstone family that is to be here. Like, hey, what do you what do you need me to do? And Elsa's like, well, first off, you can kill all of or you can clean up all of this mess. So we then have this movie, of course, end with uh, the werewolf and man thing uh, kind of having this little camp together where they're sharing this this cup of uh, cup of coffee or tea or whichever so uh the werewolf and the man thing are going on to talk to each other about how many times uh they saved one another and so on and so forth and all this of course is now go into technicolor so you guys can go on and get like the the technicolor end of this film as we also have somewhere over the rainbow that is being played because of course wizard of oz would give us a black and white movie and then also a Technicolor film. So that's the reference. So by the end of this, that is the way that this movie just kind of goes into an end uh, sequence. And so with that said, that ends up wrapping up this whole thing. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I forgot about. There might have been a bunch of details uh, within this movie that especially during the whole beginning of it that I didn't really go into. Like we go on and we explain that it's like, well, yeah, like... Uh, this world may, uh, or this, uh, there might be another Marvel universe that might have the Avengers, but uh, if anything, uh, we are just going to kick off our Marvel MCU. So right now we're going to tell you a little story about a, a vampire uh, werewolf. Or, or, or uh, let's back up a little bit uh, about a werewolf story, but. Uh, we end up like beginning it with uh, Dracula, the vampire, so on and so forth. So, with that said, I'm just going to go on and get out of here to try to make this review as short as humanly possible. So, yeah, there's no Easter eggs. There's nothing that really... Uh, I know a lot of people could be just these uh, Marvel ultimate knowledge of whatever. And they're just like, oh no, like this monster was in uh, Tales to Astonish, number blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, all right, great. <laughs> like... Because some people might have that kind of knowledge or that uh, that Marvel uh, know, know of all. Um, I, of course, would go through a Marvel encyclopedia, but uh, like I've thumbed through that. But heaven forbid, I, I know if there's any real monsters that connect from that to this. So with that said, I'm just going to go on and get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.